In the previous video, I talked about how conventional wisdom can derail authors and speakers in so many ways. And that the first step to breaking this pattern is to understand your current location and stage as a thought leader. You might be thinking, I didn't know there were stages of thought leadership, to which I might say, I didn't either, <laughs> until I began putting together all the patterns I've seen in this space over the last 16 years, including how authors and speakers get stuck in the same places and in the same ways. And I began to notice, oh, it's because they're missing certain elements of their positioning and their platform. And I would know this because like I might have a conversation with a potential client and realize, oh my gosh, it sounds shockingly similar to 10 other conversations I've had over the past couple of months. And oh, they're all missing some of the same elements. You might say that they were at the same stage of development. And then I was like, wow, am I seeing stages of thought leadership? Because if this is true, I could use this knowledge to proactively help authors and speakers avoid getting stuck and avoid these classic pitfalls. Oh my gosh, this is really exciting. And I'm having this revelation, seven months pregnant, with weeks to go before my son is being born. Murphy's Law, this is not the best timing. Fast forward, my son was born, I was working on this idea in the background, and then 18 months ago, I had an opportunity to deliver a workshop for um, an NSA chapter in Austin. I did a high level introduction of the stages and I got some really interesting comments, questions and feedback. And in reflecting on that, I realized I have a responsibility to put the final touches on this idea and get it out to the world. Because when you understand your stage as a thought leader, it can help you make the right decisions at the right times and in the right ways. So that's the backstory on the stages. So let's look at the stages in more detail. There's actually four of them, but today we're gonna look at the first stage, which is incubation. There's so much I could say about this stage because it's complex and big, but for today, there's two important things I want you to know. In incubation, thought leaders are in the early stages of development with their message and audience, and this is true, even when they have years of experience as an executive, an entrepreneur, or a leader. In incubation, you might say that you have more of a meme or a hunch or a hypothesis as opposed to a fully formed message that's worthy of a book. So remember a moment ago when I was talking about the fact that I thought there might be stages of thought leadership, I knew I was onto something, but I also knew that I was probably seeing the tip of the iceberg and that there was more depth and nuance there. So I also knew that I needed to fully test, further test the idea with clients. And then I needed to test the idea with trusted industry colleagues who could help me see different perspectives and poke holes in my argument. Doing the work of incubation is about giving your message shape and form so you know how it's different from all the other messages that have come before and so that you know how to make it unique, compelling, and relevant. The second thing I want you to know about incubation is that it's about developing the messenger behind the message. You see, when you're called to change the conversation in your industry, like this is a big deal. It's a long-term commitment. It's more than just rushing to write a book and putting it out there as a bestseller for a day. And when we think about long-term commitments, this requires an assessment of like, can we say yes to this? You know, do we have the capabilities? Do we have the, mo the emotional resilience? Do we have the resources? It's kind of like marriage. You know, you know you love someone, but are you willing to step onto that altar and, and say for better or worse, for richer or poorer? And this is important in the world of thought leadership because as an example, traditional publishers, if they say yes to your book proposal, they wanna know that you're committed to this idea for the next three to five years. That's not a, like a arbitrary numbers, but it takes time to really shift the conversation and to make that long-term impact. So these are the universals in incubation. Develop your message and to develop the messenger behind the message. And while these are the requirements of this stage, there's a unique process that you'll go down to develop your own message and to develop yourself as a messenger. There's no checklist for this and it can require some like experimentation to find your right path. Not to mention these bigger patterns I've talked about in the world of thought leadership they definitely play out within this stage as well, which means there are some classic pitfalls that you may fall into. In the next video, I'm gonna highlight two of those classic pitfalls, why they happen and how you can avoid them. 
stay tuned for the next video.